10 benefits of walking backward. Number one, knee health. Walking backward is the lowest level of knees over toes training. Adding resistance with a sled or treadmill not turned on or resisted treadmill allows you to get strength and circulation at the same time to both protect and heal. Number two, we've noticed it's a great exercise for foot health because you're pushing through your foot structures with every step. Number three, naturally it becomes a great lower leg exercise as well. Number four, as you start healing your lower body, you start huffing and puffing, you get cardio out of it. And as a result of all that, you wind up strengthening and powering up your legs themselves. Number six, you directly get better at going downhill, decelerating. Number seven, there seems to be an effect whereby improvement in these positions, you can actually run faster. Number eight, you're definitely powering up positions to improve jumping, not to mention if your knee doesn't hurt and you're able to go jump, you get more result out of that jump session. Number nine is knee bulletproofing, a bit different than just healing or health. This is a gateway exercise, which then allows more ability as you progress into further knee exercises. And number 10 is mental. When you're on painkillers, icing in a cycle of surgeries, it's both physically and mentally freeing to find out you can actively do something to improve the ability of your knees while reducing their pain. Now let's break these down a bit slower. If we start from number one, the very lowest level would be walking backward in a pool, holding on to the side. Some people have reported regaining the ability to walk by going in the pool, walking backward in the pool. Walking on land can be good, particularly if you hold hands with someone. So they're walking backward, you're going forward watching them. Then you would repeat in the other direction. They've been doing that in Asia for thousands of years. They've passed it on from generation to generation. They believe a hundred steps backward are worth a thousand steps forward. I used methods like dragging sleds backward. I was extreme enough that my buddy and I would take turns sitting in the car with the car in neutral, put our butt against the bumper and move the car. I wouldn't say I recommend that. Later, we figured out that if you go to your gym and you see the treadmill there, if you don't turn it on, sometimes it has some resistance. That would be like one set of resistance. So sometimes it works, sometimes it's not enough, sometimes it's too much. Now, more recently, I started making these backward treadmills. This allows people to hold on. So when someone's really fragile and they don't feel comfortable even walking backward or dragging a sled backward, they can use the railings, support the weight of the upper body, take as small of steps as needed and build from there. This is really what it's all about for the knees. It allows you to go from here to, <laughs> and if, if you have a sled or something like this, there's just infinite resistance. But unlike weights that bear down on us that do have tremendous potential, weights have amazing potential, even our own body weight loading has great potential. But with this, if you think about dragging a sled, if you think about cranking the resistance all the way up on this, you could go to a thousand pounds of resistance, but you don't all of a sudden have a great injury risk. If you put a thousand pounds in your back, boom, that's gonna be more injury risk. Whereas in this case, it just wouldn't budge or the sled just wouldn't budge. So the weight's not bearing down on you. So it's this sort of fundamentally safe type of knee exercise. And you're able to go for extended period of time, which is really valuable when it comes to the knee because a lot of the structures inside the knee that were originally thought, oh, you just have to get surgery or this or that, it's been found actually they can naturally heal, but the degree that they're damaged makes it harder to get the blood supply to heal. So a traditional leg workout might not be able to get the blood supply. So I think that is a key part of the equation is I'm advising in my programs, we use five to 10 minutes of backward. That's very different when it comes to healing. No, we're not doing five to 10 minutes on any of the further progressions, but when it comes to walking backwards, that's my standard advice is five to 10 minutes of working on that. Now oh, let's keep going. My dad had chronic foot pain. I had what I then realized was plantar fasciitis. I assumed, well, because he has it, I guess it's just genetically we have that or something. And on my journey of falling in love with the backward, digging, digging, digging through the toes, I was trying to dig through the toes to better activate the muscles here. Cause like this is not as much of an e-workout as when you're intentionally pushing through the toes. My foot pain started to go away. So you're loading the foot structures. You've got dozens of different muscles down in the lower leg and the feet themselves. A traditional leg workout, your foot might be flat the whole time. So you may be powering up other things. Well, this you can power up, but you're doing it in such a natural way. You're still pushing through those foot structures. 
And as a result of pushing through the foot structures, I think it should be separately mentioned as number three of strengthening uh, the lower legs. So things like shin splints often rely on some of these lower calf muscles that you're working when you're in this position. So you're in a knee over toe position, but you're working through the lower legs. So it's not just the upper calf, you're getting down into some of those lower calf muscles. When I think lower leg, I'm thinking things like shin splints and Achilles problems. You restrict the knee over the toe, we start restricting a bit of that ability to develop those lower legs as well. Now you can even hear a bit in my voice, start breathing a little heavier. I am not trying to say this is like better cardio than other cardio methods. It's just cool that you can be in the zone trying to heal and power up your lower body. And in this style, five to 10 minutes, well, that's a good degree of cardio, particularly if someone is injured, not in their sport, things like that. So I've noticed over the years that doing this as part of the recovery process for athletes, they go back to the sport and they often feel incredible. They've got more elasticity, they can jump higher, they can last longer. So it's a nice secondary benefit that you get this cardio effect unintentionally. It's, it is the nature of it. The harder we work backward without pain, the more healing we get. So like this would only get me a certain amount of healing. The harder I can go, the more circulation I'm gonna get deeper and deeper into the knee. <laughs> Winds up getting you some cardio. Especially for me now having two kids, age one and three, holy crap. And you, you know, you know what it's like if you've been there and you had two toddlers, like, I look back at my life before and it's like, I was just lying to myself about how busy I thought I was or things like that. Um, but I love it, it's the, it's the number one job. But I value my time now. I know it sounds crazy, but for me, even right now that I can be filming a video and keeping some cardio in there, it's really valuable for me. And number five on the leg strength, powering up the legs, we're getting stronger in a really athletic position. So. It's cool that you can do something that gets you the cardio, that gets you the healing, but you're not having to sit around being like, oh, I hope this works, or oh shit, I just wasted six months losing my strength, hoping the pain would go away. No, this is an, this is an approach to the pain that you're only gonna get more ability. As we keep going from that, deceleration, speed jumping, we named as six, seven, eight. I found out I could dunk a basketball. I had given up on my dream of dunking a basketball, worked, at these knee progressions to the point that then a guy that I was now was able to play basketball on a team being able to play games for the first time in years because my knees were healthy enough and when my team was like yeah you, you could dunk I'm like what are you talking about because I wasn't I was never anywhere near close enough like I was never able to even try to attempt dunking and like within a few tries I could dunk still um wild to me and it makes sense. This is a really natural jumping position, but also in relation to speed, uh, it seems there's an effect on speed. There is not that speed is like all about knees over toes, but for one thing, when you start running, the degree, like the shin angle you can get is gonna affect your ability. Like when you're like, if you're a stiffer, you see these like stiffer guys and they can't run fast. Well, this would, you know, the this might be considered uh, here and here, some of the opening steps of being able to run fast, being able to handle those pressures. So this gets you healthier. You can handle those angles better. So when you do sprint, when you do jump, you tend to get more out of it than when you sprint and jump and you're afraid to go into those positions. So you get more adaptation from the sprinting, from the jumping. The deceleration part is the most direct though. Like you're literally working. This is like you're going backward up a hill. So. One of the most common wins we get is people who can now hike. And now when they go downhill, their knees don't hurt. Same hike, same person. Years and years that they can't do it without excessive pain. They either have to give it up, wear knee braces, all kinds of things, do the training. Then they can do the exact same hikes, pain-free going downhill. But it makes sense. They're simply improving. They're improving their ability in reverse of going downhill. Now the ninth one, we talk about bulletproofing. So let's say that hurt and that was weak. Well, if all we did was just increase some of these really minimal athletic positions, then as you go farther into things like ATG split squat, well, ability here makes it a little bit easier to get here and so on. So this is uh, a 
gateway to more ability and exercises. I, so I would consider this like a healing exercise. I would consider something like the ATG split squat, lifting the heel, a hybrid exercise where I'm getting healing effects to some extent. I'm building connective tissue uh, and bulletproofing at the same time. So this done like in zero, we want this to be pain-free and easy, high repetition. Well, I can get healing effect out of that, but this would be more pure healing. That would start to get into more bulletproofing. So better results with this seem to be better results with every step thereafter from the circulation to the strength, making those positions less painful to keep progressing. Number 10 is mental. Yep, I was depressed before I found this stuff. I didn't have a plan B in life to playing basketball. Um, I was painting walls for my dad from nine to five. And don't get me wrong, I enjoyed the work, but even not being able to go play basketball on the weekend with my friends, like it just, it took away so much. You start kind of looking gloomily like, geez, once I'm a dad, once I have a family, like, like I'm just gonna be this sort of burden on the family having to ice my knees, not being able to play in actively with the kids. You just get this gloomy outlook when you can't use your body as you could, as it was intended to be able to be used. So I was in this world of, let's hope this surgery works. Ooh, new drug, new drug, hope it'll work every time crashing back worse than before because really the drugs are masking the pain. So then you go out, you don't really know what the damage you're doing inside. You think, oh my gosh, this, this drug does it. This is the one for me. And then you crash harder than before. It was actually my high school coach um, getting me onto a leave. And I was taking like a lot of them. And that's not even, you know, a more hardcore drug like I took later. But just that alone, like I was getting less pain and then didn't even realize. And like I woke up this morning. I don't even know what happened. I woke up one morning and like I couldn't even bend my knee. Had I not been trying to drug away the pain, I wouldn't have even, like, I would rather know where the pain is and then handle that rather than just try to uh, avoid feeling it. So I feel like the better the pain drugs, the more likely more major surgeries. You're, you're walking into surgery. Chronic pain, drugs, surgery's coming right around the corner because now you can't even feel the damages you're doing. So finally finding that I had something I could actively do, not just ice, this supplement, that looking, looking all these hopeful things that would hopefully make the pain go away while my basketball skills were disappearing, while whatever strength I had in my legs was disappearing, while I was missing out on life. Then come to find out I could do something. I mean, that was it. Quite frankly, I never looked back. It took me years and years and years to figure out what the ATG system is now. But just finding out I could do something to lower my pain level in the moment, go work at it, and as a result, have more ability. That was 13 years ago. Had plenty of ups and downs figuring out the system, figuring out how to find all these pain-free regressions. But I just knew in that moment when I found out there was something I could do, I knew it was game over. I was gonna have a different rest of my life. Comparatively, I've been happy ever since. So I hope this video does that for someone else out there. Thanks to everyone who has supported ATG, done my programs, and now supports the equipment innovations we're working on. This is not as smooth and comfy as the treadmill at the gym on average. This is a fifth of the price of those, but I would argue that based on physics, you get way more results out of this than using the treadmill at the gym. So it's kind of cool. It's not, simplified stuff is not for everyone. Some people, they need that the thousands of dollars. They, if it's $10,000, they think it's gonna work better than if it's less cost. But I'll argue as long as I live that actually the simpler we can make this to make you do the work, the better results you're gonna get. But it's new. So that, I mean, you should have huge, huge gratitude for everyone who has supported this early on. It takes us a few months to make it because we've been selling out quite fast. Um, but these, we've already got, you know, a thousand of these are out to people out in the world feeling that same burn of backward sled, which backward sled in itself. Look, if you've got the space in the turf, backward sled, you don't need to, you're good. But 
think of how simplified that is. A piece of metal on turf dragging weight, no machine, no electronics involved. That's even a little bit simpler than this, but I don't have the space for that here. That's the number one problem. And this just scales a little bit better for people at lower levels to start out. So I'll keep working on this. I'll shut up now, talk plenty, get out there. Let me know how it goes. Much love.